Radical. Welcome to this week's episode of the Print on Demand cast. Each week, join the gnarly Travis and Josiah as they provide insight into the print on demand industry and equip you with the totally tubular tools, advice, and strategies you need to achieve success and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. Now, on to this week's totally tubular show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print On Demand cast. Thank you guys so much for uh, subscribing, for listening, for pressing play, for checking us out. For those of you that don't know, my name is Josiah and I am joined as always with my co-host Travis Ross, all the way from Make Your Mark Design in Broomfield, Colorado, uh, on this lovely, lovely Monday. Uh, Travis, you know, we've been pretty transparent up until this point because it's awkward. This waffle section has become that way. (laughs) <laughs> because uh, I, we don't know, dear listener, when you're going to be listening to this particular episode because Travis uh, is leaving town to Hawaii for his 25th wedding anniversary. He and his wife yeah. are getting away, much deserved respite from the craziness of everyday life, and they're just going to go celebrate. So as a result, we have been just stockpiling these episodes <laughs> for you. Um, and so typically, uh, if you're new to the show, you will have been introduced to what we call our waffle section, which is basically <laughs> just us bantering about about our week. Uh, if you're familiar with the show, you're like, where the hell did the waffles go? And to you, I say, friends, just be patient. We'll have fresh waffles for you sometime soon. And we'll have a lot to talk about because they're Hawaii and the Super Bowl will have happened. And there's just so much to talk about uh, post this batch session. So right. all of that to say, Travis, how are things going at Make Your Mark Design in a very general, non-specific to a date sense? <laughs> that's, so, that's so funny. I just feel so bad for all the people who are like, they've heard this same opening, you know, for how many weeks? Travis is going to Hawaii. Travis is going to, I swear, Travis is going to Hawaii. Well, I mean, and this they're guy like, doesn't go need any already. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> well, I mean. It, it's it's strange it's crazy because this month you're going to hawaii next month i'm going to brazil for almost the same amount of time right but you're going to hawaii so we will be doing another one of these marathon batching Probably. sessions and maybe between now and then we can collaborate as to how to make these intros a little bit more seemingly organic and engaging uh yeah. but i mean for this i mean we're, we're very transparent with with you our, our listeners and so i mean i don't i don't see why we need to put on some kind of pretend I, like I mean, if you've watched these last two we're wearing the same clothes in the last two episodes <laughs> we recorded so uh it is what it is but yeah man um i'm really excited about this particular uh interview uh because we we met uh our interviewee our guest at mm-hmm. uh, iss in long beach and i i, I think I, I like i'm excited because you know this this interview and the one we had with jessica is is really cool because we went into Long Beach not really knowing what the fruit of it would be. It was right. kind of a flyer in the sense of trying to market the podcast and trying to organically kind of grassroots bring awareness to what we what we're doing here on the show. Mm-hmm. And so for this to be, you know, the second interview we recorded with the second person that we met on ISS that we made a connection with that's been willing to come on the show and chat with us. It's super exciting because it, it to me it makes it makes Long Beach from a podcast the POD cast perspective um, seem that it was, it was a it was a fruitful venture for nothing else we've made we made contacts and made friends yeah. and we'll be able to to uh, you know grow that way as well so yeah it's I, I'm really excited for the interview we just recorded it what did you think uh, and what should the listeners kind of keep an ear out for yeah I think uh, I mean um, there's kind of that weird thing where uh, you know, awkward styles basically does what I do, you know, just on a much larger scale. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, you know, if, again, being totally transparent, I'm like, well, do I really want to have a competing company on, you know, but we've had gelato on in the past. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's just like at the end of the day, this podcast, you know, the print on demand cast is, is for, uh, the listeners. It's not for me, you know? And so, yeah. um, I, I'm very glad that we were able to, um, you know, have Alex on and talk about awkward styles uh, because they have they have a really cool business model and they they're really serving the print on demand community and so yeah. um, 
it makes sense to have them on our show because we also want to serve the print on demand community. And so, uh, there's a like kind of a, a like-minded mission, uh, with them. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed meeting her. Uh, I've seen her a ton of times they have on their Instagram. She's kind of the face of their Instagram. And, um, so yeah, I've seen her a bunch online and then meeting her at the show finally, um, and having her on today and finally getting that dad joke that we have, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, been she, trying to yeah. get out of her since we met her. <laughs> yeah. You'll hear, you hear it in the intro of the interview, but, uh, essentially we, we, we ran into her in the booth and we were like, Oh, we need to, we need to talk to her. Cause again, Travis was like, I know her, she does all social media and we mm -hmm. need a dad joke and she'd be totally game for it. Cause she records content all the time. So we went day one, said, hey, Alex, this is who we are, and we're doing that. Do you have a dad joke? And she was like, I have one tomorrow. Went back the next day. Long story short, we're finally – we got our rain check <laughs> ashed uh, uh, so many weeks later. So, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited, and, uh, we, you know, we don't need any more kind of uh, waffle <laughs> leading into this interview. So let's go straight to this week's main event, our interview with Alex Galindo. for this week's main event we have a guest with us that we uh, we met in iss at iss long beach mm -hmm. uh, stopped by their booth and uh, asked her for a dad joke and she said come back tomorrow then we went back the next day she didn't have a dad joke so we brought her on the show to finally <laughs> make good on her dad joke promise but that's not the only reason we are we have her on the show uh, um her name is Alex Galindo. We're super excited to have her on the show. Uh, for those of you that don't know who Alex is, here's a little bit about her and her background. Alex is the social media specialist, which sounds like a job that would fall into my dream job category. Social media <laughs> spe specialist at Awkward Styles and has been at the company for three and a half years. She started as a customer service representative for the Awkward Style Styles online stores. And about a year later, they began building their business to business department where she was the head of B2B customer service. She later moved to their B2B marketing department where she is now, again, as the social media specialist. So we would like to welcome on the show, Alex Galindo. Alex, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to, to join us. Hello. No, thank you guys for having me on. You guys are really fun. <laughs> I'm yeah. Happy yeah we're we're very very happy to have you on here now i i remember so um i'm gonna pull back the curtain a little bit you act i don't know if you remember this but you actually reached out to us probably six to eight months ago and said hey awkward styles is a great fit for your audience you should have us on and um you know where we were at at the time I must confess and must apologize. I completely ignored that. Uh, well, I did say, hey, send us something. And, you know, I did respond. It wasn't a complete ignore, but nothing ever came of that until we actually, you know, uh, got to see you in person at, um, at ISS. And like Josiah said, you really do owe us a dad joke. So we'll get to that <laughs> later. We'll get to that later. Uh, but uh, I think we should just start, you know, um, you said you've been at Awkward Styles for three and a half years. I'm curious to hear, you know, we always ask, what is your print on demand story or your printing story? How did you get into the industry, Alex? And um, and you can even share a little bit about like what you like about it. What's kept you there, I guess. Let's start there. Yeah. So um, I actually started with Awkward Styles. Um, I didn't know anything about print on demand or like selling on mm -hmm. Etsy, Shopify, any of how this worked you know i had done online shopping but didn't know where it came from didn't care to know where it came <laughs> from. <laughs> um so this is actually my first experience with the industry um and i guess i kind of the reason i love it so much is because i started i would say from the base i know how everything works mm -hmm. from the actual production yeah mm -hmm. to you know how it gets to the customer and how the seller works with someone like us yeah and i think that's why i love it because i've seen it front and back a thousand times and it's just so fascinating 
because there's mm-hmm. always something to learn, you know, there's mm-hmm. technical details, but then there's, you know, how to work with people, how to understand them, what appeals to them, both yeah. as a seller and as a customer, because I kind of managed our stores a little bit, you know, with the customer service and monitoring, mm-hmm. monitoring analytics and all of that, like the very basic, but I will say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, I think that's what's kept me here is that there's just so much to learn. And I just, I mean, what's kept me at Awkward Style specifically is that I really, really love the culture here mm-hmm. and just like how close we are and how yeah. open we are to learning and teaching each other. Um, so that's specifically about like the company, but just the industry. I, I never knew you could be so passionate about print on demand. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like I, I will go out with friends. I'll go to a party and I'm like that one person talking about her job. <laughs> this is just so cool. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it's definitely an industry that, I mean, uh it's it's always changing it's always evolving there's always something new and to your point about knowing kind of the the nuts and bolts of everything and being being able to speak about it intelligently uh you know when i was in the business daily when i was in the industry that was Mm -hmm. kind of my job i was the person that i knew how to fix run the machines produce the shirts you know, get everything set up front and to back, all of that. And then I was also customer facing a lot talking to people. So just Mm -hmm. that like hands-on experience really does lend itself to the ability to uh, not only speak to customers intelligently about what it is that you're trying to sell them, but also empathize with them through every step of the experience because you yourself have either been on either side as a customer or as a part of the business in the industry. But hands-on experience is is something that's just so so valuable to have, um, especially when you're when you're working B two B, especially. Yeah, especially like for business, I feel there are things that, when it comes to sales or, or business in general, you just don't learn in school. Yeah, that's sure. Experience. Yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so you. Go ahead. I, I was just going to do a follow up. So um, you said you you know you kind of learned a lot um, on the job and learned a lot about the different machines and the different techniques and stuff. Did that primarily come um, just by doing customer service and and being forced to kind of answer specific questions, you know, about DTG or about sublimation, and you just kind of had to learn um, on the job, um, or do, were you actually like? going you know did you actually go into production and and like learn how to print a shirt learn how to you know do sublimation and all of that stuff how did, how did all that knowledge come up uh, come to you um so the first thing i learned about was transfers actually mm-hmm. um because i started when we like were really more into b2c and i started mm-hmm. in production um so i learned about you know the I guess the order process from I, I would like after I was in customer service, that meant that I knew what happened from the moment we got an order to yeah. what temper it goes to or how a heat press works or, you know, how to keep decal inventories, not decal, sorry, like transfer inventory because sure. I yeah. kept up with that. Um, and once I was in customer service, I didn't I stopped learning about production, really. Um, I learned more about like processing times and how processing times work. And I would say that I really learned um, how DTG works and how like machines and fabric types and all that work when I was in B2B customer service, mm-hmm. because, um, you know, they there were um, merchants that had a lot of questions like, why did my shirt come out like this? Or how can I improve, yep. you know, my shirt like this? Um, and then eventually with our own website, that's when I was like, I, I was a little bit, you know, B2B um, customer service, but mostly social media. Yeah. And I feel like I've had the privilege of learning a lot more through there because, you know, you get DMs every day. How do I connect my store? How do I go about yeah. marketing? What is print on demand? Um, what's DTG? All of that. And I think it was more like my own curiosity along each stage that really allowed me because I, I wanted to give our users actual answers. I don't yep. like generic yep. generic um, answers. So it was really like each person has a personalized question. I want to give them a personalized answer. So that mm-hmm. meant that I had to understand what's an underbase, what's DTG, yeah. why do we print on cotton? Um, so yeah, it was kind of, I think it, it was a really big opportunity to be able to be in every part 
of of the process. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely helps you get uh, a greater appreciation. I always tell the story when I was in high school. I worked at a, a restaurant, and I was uh, a host and a server. But it was a, it was a requirement from the owners of the restaurant that before I served a table i had to spend a night in the kitchen i had to spend a night in the dish pit i had to spend a night as a bus boy i had to spend in every department so that i could learn it and get an appreciation for it every piece of the the working of the restaurant what they do how it all works together so yeah it's it's incredibly incredibly beneficial so um i i have a question just randomly what is what does the name awkward styles come from how how would do you know what what the history of that yeah. name is we get that question a lot. Um, <laughs> so, like I said, initially we started um, as online stores, online sellers. Um, so the name was meant to be a kids apparel line, like a kids apparel brand name. Okay. Mm -hmm. styles. Yeah. So that's how, how they came up with it. Um, I don't think it means like anything itself, awkward styles. It's just like something sure. simple, you know. Um, and then the frogs is because the owner really likes um frogs and like keeping pets around so actually <laughs> nice. in our office we have little green tree frogs um, we have turtles oh, wow. fish wow we have um like little lizards as well so wow. that's <laughs> awesome i mean it's a, it's a conversation starter right yeah that's it's, for sure uh, it definitely is <laughs> I, I can understand understand that it gets the conversation started so um what what would you say alex you know since you're doing a lot of social media you're interacting with a lot of people so in your best um summation what do you think the mission of awkward styles is if you had to give that elevator pitch of like this is why we exist as a company and this is what why we're in the we're in the market that we're in um so in general as a company i would say that we're in print on demand because we want to help facilitate fulfillment for sellers. So our slogan is you sell, we fulfill. That mm -hmm. means that we want to make the production part for you easy as a seller. There are already so many things to worry about um, and keeping inventory, minimum order quantities, finding all these suppliers. It's a lot to take when you're beginning. Um, yeah. So we mm -hmm. want to make that as easy as possible with software that works to your needs, with the products that you're already looking for, and with yeah. the printing methods that you trust. Yeah. Um, I would say us as Awkward Styles, you know, kind of in the print on demand industry, um, I would say our mission is to keep um, good pricing for good quality and to listen to what our users are saying. Hmm. You know, because I feel like, um, you know, when you grow, it can be a little difficult to hear every voice. But um, I think our mission, even if it's not on our mission statement, is to actually care about what users are saying and, yeah. you know, grow based on that. Because we want to grow with them, yeah. not like, you know, at their at their expense. That makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Follow up question on that. What um, what makes Awkward Styles different or how do you differ from other print on demand fulfillment partners? Um, I mean, there's a lot of choices out there and you know, you know, I could, I could probably list 10 just off the top of my head mm -hmm. that, um, I mean, we, I, I don't know if you know that we, I'm actually sitting in my office for my fulfillment center, you know? <laughs> um, so we, you know, we have, uh, you know, clients that come to us for fulfillment. And so I'm just curious, how does awkward styles differ from other print on demand fulfillment partners when there's so many to choose from? Mm -hmm. I think, um, it's mostly the thing that um, stands out is we fulfill about 95% in-house. So we have a very tight leash on our quality control procedure. Sure. Um, and we offer one-on-one -on -one partnership calls with every user, um, no matter the size. Um, mm -hmm. And then in terms of like the more personable things, I would say is that we listen and, and we make changes as soon as we can based on that. Like whenever I answer a comment, I'm like, I'll pass it along to our product development team. Like I will literally get up, go to their office and be like, yeah. hey, <laughs> you know, these people have been saying this thing. Like how can yeah. we make it better? Um, yeah. But yeah, I think the thing that's most appealing is uh, that we offer, you know, the basics, which is no minimum order quantities and a lot of products, but that it, but they're mostly fulfilled by us. Yeah. In okay. So we're yeah. US based. That's awesome. Where are you guys located? 
Santa Fe Springs. It's like in 45 minutes from LA. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. That's great. Yeah, I think, I mean, we've talked about this on the show a handful of times when it comes to, you know, being a fulfillment partner or any kind of, you know, business in the, or any kind of business model in this industry. The one thing that can definitely help you stand out is the customer service, the personal touch, the building that mm-hmm. relational equity with your customers mm-hmm. and developing that cult like following where people are like, if you're not using awkward styles, then you're doing it wrong. And that only <laughs> comes from um, generating that that personal relationship via social media comments or DMs mm-hmm. and interacting with your followers. So yeah, that, that definitely is something that can help you uh, stand apart from, from some of the other fulfillment partners in the industry. Um, you mentioned that you fulfill 93% ish of your stuff or 95 and somewhere up, up in there. Uh, and your website says you fulfill over 150 products, mm-hmm. which is a lot. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to ask, we have a question here and I'm going to add to it. I'm going to pivot a little bit pivot! and we're I'm going to, I'm going to add on to it. So, what is one of your some of your favorite products and what is your favorite print method that you've been involved with? You can do favorite and least favorite. My least favorite is embroidery, so feel free to throw that under the bus because I don't like it. Uh, but yeah, so what are some of your favorite products and what are your, some of your favorite like print processes that you've been able to actually you know, uh, take part in there uh, at Awkward Styles? My favorite products. Um, okay, let me think. Um, I really like the jewelry that we recently launched. Um, mm-hmm. I oh. wear it myself actually sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like the jewelry. Um, I like the kids' collection. It's really soft, but I really like the kids' blanket that we have. I like the blanket that we nice. have. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? And I like the there's there's like these dowel hanging posters, but they're canvas, mm. like mm. the paper canvas. I really like those too. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Something that's different from t-shirts because I also love the t-shirts, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone yeah. does it. So <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And then so you... printing method, right? Oops, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Ooh, let me think. Um, I like sublimation, but specifically I like it on our metal prints. Hmm. Yeah. Those like are, metal, metal wall art kind of like, stuff. Yeah. Is that what you're yes. Yeah, those are, those are incredible. That, isn't it? Oh, those are my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because of yeah. that. I agree. It's so hard to communicate like online or in, you know, in digital form, how amazingly cool those things are when you yep. see them in real life. I remember uh, at one of our, the first trade show we went to, you mm-hmm. remember Josiah in Portland, we yeah. at a, in Portland and yep. there were some people doing, you know, some of that metal wall art. I think it was Condi um, and yep. they had, okay. you know, all of this metal wall art and we were just like, oh my gosh, that is just so, and you just, did that with, you just did that with a printer, a sublimation printer and a flat press. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it's amazing. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was 100%. incredible. So Alex, so um, on all these products, you guys have a ton of products. What are like, let's just get into the nitty gritty of like the, what can people expect from Awkward Styles if they partner with you? What are like some of your, what is your typical fulfillment time? Does it, does it differ from uh, department to department or is it pretty much straight across? You can expect to have this many days in fulfillment. Um, How does that look? What does that look like? Um, so it differs more uh, by time of year. I would say by uh, like the last quarter. Sure. Um, but most of the sure. year, two to three business days, and then mm-hmm. around the holidays, that it averages to four business days. Yeah. So yeah, it's not like an exact like all every time you're gonna get two business days or every time you're gonna get three business days, but it's mm-hmm. kind of our average because like even for example, um, the white t-shirts they don't require poo treatment, so they sometimes sure. get in like one day and a half or something. Um, whereas if we get an order for a hundred t-shirts, that's probably gonna go towards you know the latter sure. <laughs> the sure. end of the spectrum. So yeah, it's kind of yeah that's our average year round kind of. Do yeah. you see a lot of? Um... A, a lot of products like bulk orders coming in for, you know, a hundred t-shirts, 
or is it mostly one? I mean, I'm sure it's mostly onesie twosies, but what, I guess, what percentage are you seeing as bulk orders? Surprisingly, we do get quite a bit um, bulk mm. orders as well. Um, maybe the ones that are like over 30, I would say are more rare. Um, mm -hmm. We've been gotten like literally thousands um, in an order, <laughs> but um, hmm, I don't know if I have a number, an accurate number, maybe. So let's say out of 20 orders, two or three, maybe might be over five items of the same okay. product. Um, especially when there's like um, an event or sure. um, like a team or like yeah. family shirts, for example. Um, yeah, like I was just in QC right now and there was an order and it seemed it was like for 15 hoodies. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine yeah. you get a lot of those family trip shirts being that close to Disneyland and all yeah. of those first attractions. <laughs> yeah, you probably get a lot of those. Common. But it's also, you know, um, it's because like some small businesses do uh, shows themselves. So um, like events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I right. Don't know they're called, but they take a bunch of shirts and um, they they take them to the show um, and they do it with yeah. print on demand. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. And then um, my kind of last question, I, because you guys are on the West Coast, and I'm sure a lot of your customers are on the East Coast, have you had any pushback on like shipping times um, to get all the way across the country? And and I, I mean, have you guys considered maybe opening up an East Coast um, f facility? Mm -hmm. um, and if so, can you talk about that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we have been thinking about expanding um, mm -hmm. into the East Coast because of that, um, just to save, you know, on, on fulfillment time and shipping times. Um, I honestly don't know what our plans, where our plans are at in terms of that, sure. but it's definitely like something that we see is in need and, and would help so much. Um, sure. I know it's a lot because like just renting spaces in general is complicated and mm -hmm. you know, have sure. to move some of the team over there and you know get machines over there as well yeah yeah it's a lot but i do know you know there's been conversations about it i, I know we partner with a facility over there for some of our products mm. okay um, but yeah wow. we, we and then that. what channels uh, what channels do you integrate with currently we do Etsy, Shopify, WooCommerce, and we have Orderdesk as an alternative as well, and an API mm. connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you say Orderdesk, because we use Orderdesk too, we use Orderdesk to integrate with Walmart and Amazon, and you know mm -hmm. all of those ones that are a little bit more. I call it my poor man's API because we don't <laughs> have an API at our place. It's but, it's oh yeah, it's so complicated. But um, it allows a lot of integrations. Is that kind of how you guys use it in the same way? So if somebody wants a wants to integrate with Amazon, you're like, oh sure, no problem. We'll just use the order desk. Is is that how you? Use yeah. That? So there, because um, right now we have the integrations that we see uh, the majority of our users asking for, kind of like you know the staples: Shopify, Etsy, WooCommerce. Mm -hmm. um, and then we know that there are some people that are gonna ask for like a uh, Squarespace or Equid or eBay mm -hmm. or Amazon. Sure. Um, so while we get those up and running, we have Orderdesk as an alternative since Orderdesk already has a bridge with those companies sure. and we can do the bridge to ours and it's kind of, you know, it's connecting everything. Right. That's yeah. how we, yeah, a bridge for the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That makes sense. Yeah. So, what are some of the, I mean, you mentioned, you, you know, expansion is definitely kind of on the, on the whiteboard. If you were to kind of just plan out future plans for, for awkward styles, but along with that, what are some other things that you guys are looking to in, in the near future as far as growth and expansion? So this year we're really focusing on our product catalog. Um, mm -hmm. We're getting a lot of requests for all over prints, um, like, yoga pants, for example, or all over print mm -hmm. um, t-shirts, dresses. Um, we want to expand our jewelry collection as well. And a big thing that we really want to get to this year is custom tag labels, but for everyone. So we currently have mm, them, wow. but only after a select tier. 
um, we want to do that for everyone and get more into this new technology with BTG and DTF. So we want to put wow. our spin on it and make it better. Um, yeah, yeah <laughs> in the for meantime, sure. Uh, we definitely want to expand our, our product our product catalog and along the way, of course, improve our software as much as we can. Yeah. How many people do you have working there at that facility? Like how big is the team from production to front office to what you know, social media marketing? Yeah. How many people are, are on the ground there? It's about 100, 120. Wow. Well, okay. So that's a pretty big, big facility then you guys are. Running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah, because yeah, both our offices and um, our production are in the same place. Our house in the same. Okay, okay. cool. Mm -hmm. That makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask, um, I and mean, you may may or may not know this, but when you're talking about like, uh, you know, individual tagging for everybody, are you guys, um, how are you guys going to do that? Are you going to utilize like pad printing or um, do you have kind of a strategy for for what that looks like or or do you know how deep that rabbit hole goes or <laughs> I'm just curious what you're it's all I know is that it's very complicated <laughs> because right yeah, now do, um, I, I know it's in one of our YouTube videos where they show how we do the process and it's like some it's like something that's like curved and then they put the tag and the like you know t-shirt or hoodie mm -hmm. and they press down on it um, the reason that we've taken so long to develop it is just the logistics of it it's sure you know, yeah of these um like the companies that provide the labels require really high minimum order quantities. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that if someone just wants, you know, one t-shirt mm -hmm. every week, for example. Um, mm -hmm. So right now we're working on, on the logistics, how that's going to work, how many machines yeah. we need, where we're going to place them, how that's going to look as part of our process. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not, honestly, I don't have too much information on how it works. I'm excited to learn. <laughs> because i'm like i don't know yeah. how they're gonna do it good luck with that but <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> let me know, know and i'll post it about i'll post about it on social yeah exactly i'll post about it on social media record a couple reels yeah once you guys do all the heavy lifting i'll make it look cool and exactly. make people interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah it it sounds like i mean from just what you described there that sounds like dtf you know direct to film yeah. possibly and you're basically mm -hmm. creating the transfer and then pressing the transfer on, you know, where the, the tag would go and you're ripping off the tag. Um, I, I mean, it may be, it, you could also do that with pad printing, which is a, another, it's more of a single color. You know, you can only do one color at a time with that as opposed to DTF where you can do, you know, all the colors. But the, I would say if you guys can crack that nut, um, this is, that's huge for brands, for yeah. people who have yeah, a brand, massive. but they still want to do, print on demand because their brand isn't quite big enough yeah. to go the screen printing route. Um, mm -hmm. When you do have a, you have so many more options when it comes to screen printing as far, at least as far as um, those companies have already figured out the tagging situation, yeah. you know, they've yeah. already done all that. There are pr the print on demand companies. A, most of us are relatively new in the last five to 10 years mm -hmm. um, or newer. And um, we haven't had to figure that out simply because nobody expects to be able to do a custom tag on three yeah. garments, you know, yeah. nobody's expecting that. But if you can figure that out and offer that mm -hmm. to the, to the public, um, mm -hmm. that's going to be a huge, huge thing uh, for your mm -hmm. company. I think that's really, really cool that you guys are trying to figure out that because uh, that is, that's a pain point, believe it or yeah. not. I, I don't think very many, again, I don't think very many people are talking about it because everybody understands why, and nobody wants to be uh, unrealistic in their expectations, so they don't even ask. But yeah. they would take advantage of it if it was there, for sure. So oh, kudos to you guys oh. for doing that. We get asked about uh, custom tag labels at least two, three times a day. Um, either mm. from like someone that's following up or like a new person that wants to use Awkward Styles. And they're like, oh, do you do custom tag labels? And we're like, just hang on a couple months. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> we're Almost. working on it. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's something you know I've noticed that is really big, and I'm hoping we can get through this year. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So we have here. I'm looking on the website here, and you have a couple of different tiers. You kind of alluded to that when talking about the the custom tags. Um, you have you have a free tier and a pro tier and pro plus. What what are the differences other than of course? pricing and the subscription fee mm -hmm. uh what are the differences that people get 
uh, when they subscribe to the pro or the pro plus as opposed to just rocking mm -hmm. with the free plan? So with the pro plan, really the benefit is uh, you get up to 20% discount on all of the catalog. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're able to connect more stores. So I believe with the free okay. plan, it's five or seven stores. And mm -hmm. with the pro plan, it's up to 12 stores. Um, so for people that do like multi-channel retailing or have multiple Etsy shops, Shopify stores, mm -hmm. they're able to connect um, more. Sure. And then the Pro Plus is where I was mentioning about the custom tag labels. So that's where we work with bigger brands that have like a certain daily, monthly, quarterly volume. Yep. Um, and we offer um, warehousing services for packaging custom tag labels. They get an account manager. Um, mm -hmm. They get like a personalized Slack channel. Um, and then they get tier pricing depending on the order volume as well. Um, so yeah, there, there's a, there's a lot of perks. It's definitely even more personalized as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the, the pro plus, but I would say like for people that are just starting out, um, the free plan is perfect. You know, you don't need to subscribe to get started. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe after you get like a few sales a month, I would go with the pro plan. Um, cause you know, you'd be getting that money back if you don't have like the trial, for example. Yeah. 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 And we'll, we'll, we'll actually, um, share a little bit about the, uh, the offer, I guess that Alex, uh, is, is giving or kind of the bonus that she's giving all the listeners of the print on demand cast here in a minute. But before we do that, I'm just curious, like, I just want to know about your day, um, <laughs> as you know, the social media manager of awkward mm -hmm. styles, like, what are you um, what does your day look like? What are you doing? Are you just like on Facebook and Instagram all day yeah, or, you know, I feel like I'm just like <laughs> doing research on TikTok, and I feel like people, you know, stop by my room and they just see me on my phone and they're like, <laughs> what? I want her job. You know, what does she do all day? She scrolls <laughs> on her phone. Um, so I would say in the mornings, I usually have all of my meetings. So that's mm -hmm. when I do like strategy meetings or calls with um, internally with our team. And I'm also the influencer relations manager. So I kind of take care of any new affiliates we may have, any new YouTubers that we're onboarding. Um, if we're onboarding someone to the Masters Academy, um, I kind of take care of anything that has to do with like external PR or content. Um, and then around the afternoon, if I don't have any um, internal meetings as well, like for strategy, then yeah. I kind of take care of um, content planning, um, any DMs that my team hasn't gone around to, mm. solving any issues that yeah. are easier to fix when you're here in person as opposed to our remote teams. Um, and yeah, it's, it's mostly a lot of meetings and content recording so yeah. i you know, i do the more strategy of it um and then i also i'm like i guess kind of the face at the moment so i sure. come out to podcasts i record the tiktoks um i i kind of like search around what frequently asked questions we have so we can make any tutorials or mm. any fun content that we may have um mm. and yeah I, I think that's kind of like a summary of it um sure it's, it's content yeah. writing and content strategy and relations nice. relationships nice. with people yeah yeah how much how much of are you um how much are you reaching out to because obviously we talked about you know how you reached out to us mm -hmm. a while back are mm -hmm. you doing that still or was that kind of uh, you don't have time for that anymore or you know you've grown so much mm -hmm. or like is that part of your uh your strategy i guess Yes, I, I still do that. Um, I do everything from writing out the emails that we send out to people on the one behind the newsletter as well, to finding people that align with our audience. Um, nice. So I, I'm the one writing the emails and sending them out. <laughs> <laughs> and like I, I take all the calls. So yeah, that, that's still me. Yeah, cool. That that's awesome. You mentioned Masters Academy. What what is a what is the Masters Academy? Uh, so the Masters Academy is a collaboration with other POD instructors who like from the print on demand cast who have experience in the print on demand industry. Yeah. Um, and what we do is we kind of collaborate to create a free mini course for all of the awkward styles users. So oh, they cool. kind of get a chance to, you know, answer questions, what print on demand is, how to get my first sales, for example, how does marketing sure. with 
man work. You know, there's there's a bunch of beginner friendly topics that we cover with these POD instructors. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, below that, we kind of talk about what other resources these instructors have to offer. Yeah. Um, and they're kind of, you know, if they like how they teach, if they like what the modules are or, you know, whatever the coaching provides, then they can go to the instructor's page and learn a little bit more about any courses that they have, for example. That's awesome. That's cool. Kind of like community building and yeah. providing an additional resource besides like our blog, for example. or sure. newsletter. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. is that, is the, uh, is the master's Academy something that's, uh, I should, I should check. Is that something that's like easily found on your existing website? Yep. It is right there. I just looked. <laughs> it even has an arrow pointing right to it. Courses, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll, I'll look before I ask the question, but uh, yeah, guys, you can just head over to uh, awkwardstyles.com and right there in the, the menu bar, the nav bar is the uh, master's mm -hmm. Academy. That's, that's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to say, um, Let's see here. Let me get back to my notes here. Sorry. I am all over the place here. He's, but, got, he's um, got, listen, <laughs> Alex, he's got like 94 tabs open. No, he's calling that's me, me out, probably, man. Probably that's probably me. Why, that stresses me out. What do you mean? That, that's crazy. <laughs> two types of people. <laughs> there are two types of people. People yeah. that that have, you know, 10, 10 or less tabs open. <laughs> And then us who have 50 plus tabs open. Yes. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I feel like it's in mind all the time. Right yeah. That's, yes, Alex, you, <laughs> we're, this, we're on the same wavelength here. I totally get you. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, well, so, so guys, so Alex, I was talking about this a second ago. Alex, um, you know, offered something to our listeners. And so normally when you go to Awkward Styles and you sign up, you can get a 30 day free trial of the pro plan. Um, but Alex provided us a special code, which is super cool. Um, and you get an extra 60 days of the, the free pro plan. So you get a total of 90 days, you know, like an entire quarter <laughs> to try out the pro plan. And all you have to do is use the promo code podcast, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then you can just, just go to printondemandcast.com slash awkward styles. Um, and then use that code when you check out or when you, you know, sign up for the free pro free uh, trial of the pro plan and uh, you can get those, those extra 60 days. And um, we really appreciate that Alex, as do yeah. our listeners. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Super, super cool. All right. Are we ready? Are you ready, Alex, finally for the, the make good joke. on the dad joke? Cause it, it is comes. time for everyone's favorite segment, the weekly dad joke. Time for the weekly dad joke. All right. Okay. As a procrastinator that I am, let me pull up my, <laughs> my Google. <laughs> my Google let us know when you're ready. We're good. I can wait. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> She's got it. She's, She's got, got it. it. All right. Hit it. It. And there was hit us with it. Thing. Okay, hit us with it. Uh, hit us with it. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I'm such a dork. <laughs> I'm a... For I'm for a... those of you listening, Alex has <laughs> is is laughing hysterically she's and really, yeah, um she's, can, is really having a hard time composing she's, herself. So. She's trying to she's trying to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Either the joke is really funny or we've been, I mean, the bumpers were, or the sound effects. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Oh, so bad. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. My wife said I should do lunges to stay in shape. That would be a big step forward. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> That was great. Oh, uh, yeah. I love it. I was was reading all of them because there's like a big list. And I couldn't <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. They're, we know they are everywhere. Um, I hate yep. being a Ev passenger. Everywhere. No, you're fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, so you might not know this, Alex. You might not know. Obviously, you wouldn't know what I'm about to tell you. But my wife, one of her jobs 
is she mm -hmm. helps place uh, foreign exchange students that are coming in for the year, find families for them here in mm -hmm. Colorado or throughout the country. And every year is an incentive trip. And so this year, last year we went to Germany. This year, the incentive trip is actually to Sweden. And I didn't know this. I was doing some research before the show, but the CEO of IKEA just became the president of Sweden. You've been to IKEA. I mean, everyone knows IKEA. The CEO just became the president of Sweden. Actually? Yeah. Apparently, he's still assembling his cabinet. <laughs> I was so naive. I was like, yeah, no, I mean, he must have thought about it. Like, you know what? She's thinking, how does this factor into print yeah. and demand? Like, I'm so like, confused. What in the hell is happening? Yeah. I, I'm too gullible. It was like, it was, really? It was, a, it was quite, quite the setup. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, oh. That's what happens. Every guest, the last guest we just talked to, he was like, oh, I thought you were telling me a story. When we, we told yep. him our dad joke, he was like, so I had like, no idea. Deadpan. You're like, yeah, I mean, my wife. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I laugh at my own jokes. I don't care. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, Alex. We, we've been doing this for a little while. We're pretty damn yeah. good at it. So, yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't know if that's quite the the humble brag that he's <laughs> pretending it to be, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe so, not. No, probably not. All right, so we're gonna go to uh, another segment here. Uh, we told you about this, you know, before we started recording, called the Magic Questions. It's just a list mm -hmm. of questions that we we choose, uh, you know, two or three to ask each guest uh, mm -hmm. before um, we wrap up the show. So, with that being said, it is time for the Magic Questions. And she's still laughing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the magic of, of, of the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. All so, right. I'll uh, go tell, first. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. You go first. Okay, I'll go first. So, um, Alex, if you had one print-on-demand tip to offer a brand new seller or somebody who's you know, relatively new in the print on demand game and you had one tip to offer, what would you offer them as that one tip? See what others did and how you can apply that to your dream and make it better. Nice. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes we get so overwhelmed with where to start, how to start that we forget that other people have done it before us mm, and true. that they're willing to teach us. So true. Yeah. There's yeah, lots of awesome. resources out there too if you don't have a budget. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that. Mm -hmm. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. You can just improve it and adapt it to whatever <laughs> it is that you are are wanting to use it for. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Um all right, so tell us uh let's see. If you had to I'm trying to think of which one I want to ask, Travis. Uh there's so many, so many good ones. Tell us about a time in your, maybe not your business, but your career, uh, you know, in, in print on demand as at awkward, awkward styles, whatever you'd want it to be, that something happened that it just felt like a complete failure. And you were like, I don't know if I'm going to come back from this. Like this just, it was, this just fell apart. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about one of those, one of those times. I know it's a really positive, uplifting question, but. <laughs> let's get deep into it um yes hmm. let me think about this like a failure <clears throat> i would say um in my personal career it would be when the pandemic hit mm -hmm. um, and it kind of really took like a big you know, just stomped on my health, <laughs> on my physical and mental health. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually didn't work at Awkward Styles for a while um, because I was a student and working full time here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I really thought that I wasn't going to come back, um, but I did. And I'm wow. still three and a half years later. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, that was like from my personal um, kind of journey with yeah. the career and then yeah. kind of the company. 
Um, I would say we've lost some pretty good leads um, because of like our product offering, for example, or because we don't yeah. do custom tags, um, which I totally get. Cause like, you know, although we are working on it, they, they can't put their business on hold yep. <laughs> just to work with us. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I would say that that kind of feels like ugh, maybe we're not doing it right or maybe we're not doing it in the right order. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely looking back, you know, we started from nothing from a small online store. So sure. I'd say it just allows us to know which direction we need to go in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. All right, Travis. Number three. Okay. Here comes the crystal ball question. So get out your crystal ball. Put on your little turban, look into that ball, and tell us what is the future of print on demand as you see it. The future of print on demand. Oh my goodness. Um, hmm. huh. <laughs> I'm hoping that it'll be um, even more streamlined for every part of the process. Um, mm -hmm. So like, you know, custom tag labels. And I think that uh, DTG, DTF, and all of these new technologies are rapidly, you know, um, improving. So I yes. think either DTG, someone is gonna have to do something groundbreaking with DTG, or this hybrid type of model is going to um, take over a lot mm -hmm. over the next few years. And I would say AI is really yep. just, you know, kind of <laughs> one day. It's was crazy. So I think um, AI and, and maybe this new hybrid technology for printing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well done. The great three great answers to our three magic questions. And as we start to wind down here, uh, take some time and let those listening, if they want to know more about awkward styles, signing up for a plan, uh, where to find you on social media, uh, you know, all of the places where, where you guys are available uh, for more information. Go ahead and let everyone know uh, where those places are. Um, so they can sign up for free at awkwardstyles.com. We're on Instagram as awkward styles. I think it's awkward underscore styles. Um, we're on LinkedIn as well. Um, same awkward styles. And um, we're on TikTok. We're pretty much mm -hmm. in every. <laughs> Every wow. platform. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and when you sign up, you also automatically sign up to our email newsletter. So that's a good way to stay informed with everything. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to to join us. And we look forward to, uh, I was telling Travis before we press record, maybe we should, uh, the next trade show, we'll, we'll meet up, collaborate on some content. We can tell dad jokes at your exhibit or at your booth or whatever. We'll just have a good time and yeah. make people laugh <laughs> and I'll take one and, next. Uh, time. I'll yeah, yeah. Next time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, it'd be great to. We look forward to our paths crossing again in the future and yeah. being able to um, hang out and chat some more and maybe even do an interview in person with you know yourself or a handful mm -hmm. of other awkward style folks. And yeah. uh, very excited to see what you guys do in the in the coming years for sure. Thank you so much. Likewise, I think you guys are are doing amazing. You know, with your channel and all of that. I love it. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Right. We'll, we'll talk soon. See you. But, yep. All right. Thank you one more time to Alex for taking time out of her schedule to to join us and chat. Again, it was really cool to to catch up with her and hear her story, learn more about awkward styles above and beyond what we kind of chatted, you know, there in Long Beach. So uh it was a really fun interview, really great conversation. And she laughed at the dad jokes. Yeah. The dad joke, which in my book, she laughed, I'm sure you she laughed at her. Bumpers too. Bumpers, sound effects, the whole thing. Yeah, all and of it. I'm, sure, I'm sure you're like me in the fact that if someone laughs at our jokes a lot, they can bring, they can hang out whenever. It just, yep, hundred percent. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great. And I think, you know, please do avail yourself, uh, guys, of the 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 offer that mm -hmm. that she gave. Uh, an extra sixty days is that's generous. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. super generous and. And uh, very, very cool of them to do. So again, uh, if you guys are wondering, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, even if, so there, there may be some of you who are already using Awkward Styles and you're just using their free plan. Well, you're already selling through them. Yes. Why not use those 90 days 
and get those discounted rates for that, you know, for an entire 90 days, um, yep. especially as we're going into Valentine's day and mother's day, you know, I mean, you'll get a lot of kind of value for that. Um, and, uh, yeah, all you have to do is use the code, uh, podcast. Um, of course, just go print on demandcast.com slash awkward styles. Uh, and then when you sign up, just use that podcast, um, code and it, It'll just apply that extra yeah. 60 days. So you have a total of 90 days, totally free on the pro plan. Um, you can see if it's good, see, see if there's any benefit. If, and like I say, if you're already selling on awkward styles and yeah. you're still on the free plan, this is a no brainer. Um, but even if you aren't and you're selling on another channel, you might want to check them out. So yeah. Um, and and for, for 90 days, like you said, so it's basically a quarter of the year at three, mm -hmm. three months of the year. And it's, it, this would provide you the opportunity to potentially find something that works well for you, offers a lot of different products mm -hmm. right ahead of and getting all the kinks worked out as far as fulfillment and how learning the systems before Q4. Yeah. And it could really set you up for a killer Q4 if you're wanting to do some some more drop shipping on, on whatever channels you're doing uh, with stuff that they offer. This is a perfect ramp up period to figure out, A, like you said, Travis, is this doable for me is this a good fit for me sure and then secondly uh it could set you up for a killer q4 adding all kinds of cool stuff to your catalog that you don't currently have so uh which is there again it will pay you know q4 and the success of that could could justify the subscription after the 90 days right now or whatever but yeah. um yeah it's definitely a really really cool very generous um offer from them so please avail yourself uh of that again just to reiterate, it is printonemancast.com slash awkward styles. Use the code podcast uh, to take advantage. So very, very, very cool. Uh, anything else, Travis, before we wrap this up and uh, and and conclude our batch sessions of, of, of interviews and, and content? <laughs> um, I, I guess one last last thing. I'll, I'll just re, uh, reiterate that whole Master's Academy thing. So go to printonemancast yeah. slash awkward styles or print on demandcast.com slash awkward styles right up there in the nav bar. Click the master's Academy, check it out, see what's there. There might be some cool content. Um, and, uh, you might find some other, um, potential people that you could learn from, you know, I mean, um, maybe someday we'll be in the master's Academy, <laughs> you know, I don't know, but, um, that's kind of a cool, that's a really cool idea to kind of have a content, um, catalog it, it, with it, all it, these different, you know, content creators. Yeah, it was, it's very um, reminiscent to me of a, a master's class, but for the print industry. Mm -hmm. um, master class is, of course, a website where you can go learn about, you know, filmmaking from Martin Scorsese, or I have a cousin right. who is currently learning about Texas Hold'em from Daniel Negreanu, and he's taking his master class in preparation to come play at our poker night here in the next month. So... Fingers crossed I don't lose to him because he'll never stop talking about it. But Masterclass is really cool because you do get to hear from industry professionals about a craft that you love. And it seems like they've right. kind of co-opted that model for the print industry, which is super, super cool. It's a great idea. So, yeah, avail yourself again right there at the top of the nav bar. Masters Academy. Can't miss it. It has courses with a little squiggly arrow pointing directly to it. Um, and I think it would be really, really cool just to just to check it out. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, again, thanks to Alex. And as always, thanks to you, our listeners, for listening to this show. And if you want to find out more information about our show, Attention hotline fans, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Of course, print on demandcast.com slash Facebook. Join the Facebook group, the community, the conversation. It's growing daily. Lots of cool conversations are happening. So avail yourself of that and join the family. Just be sure I'm going to say this again. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Answer the questions that you're asked when you go to join uh, or you will not get in. I'll, it'll it'll right. be a Gandalf, you shall not pass moment, but just answer the questions so we know that you are who you say you are and we're not getting bots uh, in, in the group. Uh, and so you can also go to Instagram, printondemandcast.com slash Instagram to see us there. Printondemandcast.com slash YouTube as well. Uh, it, we're on that platform right now. Our YouTube channel is essentially an archive of these episodes, but we have plans to expand and uh, and do more educational and informational and entertaining content exclusively to that platform as well. And if you want to support the show uh, monetarily and kind of invest into what we're doing here, if you like what you've heard, seen, 
uh, you like the content and you want to ha- contribute to the growth of the content, you go to print, print on demandcast.com slash shop and pick up a t-shirt. Uh, all the money is reinvested into the show, into equipment, into travel, whatever that looks like. And we're very, very appreciative of that as well. And as always, wherever there are podcasts, the POD cast is there for you. We just ask that if you're listening on the Apple podcast app, which will ever forever be iTunes to me, uh, to go ahead and leave a review, uh, you know, five stars, preferable, obviously. <laughs> and then let us know, you know, what you love about the show, a guest that you'd like to hear, your favorite dad joke, whatever. But basically what we're trying to do is just get on top of the algorithm so that people who need this information can find this information. So if you know someone, if you're part of other print groups that could hit, use the information and content that you've heard here on not just this episode, but the show in general, mm-hmm. please share it, text it whatever it looks like. And we're greatly, greatly appreciative of that as well. So with that being said, we will see you guys next week. Uh, Same bat time, same bat channel. But for Travis, I'm Josiah, and we'll see you right here on the Print On Demand cast. See ya. Hey, babe. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. We hope you enjoyed the Totally Tubular show. If you've got a question or a suggestion for the show, send Travis and Josiah an email at info at printondemandcast.com. Want to be wicked nice? Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss next week's episode. See you next time for sure.